Actually, even though I have the most boring title of the day, uh, Vince still wins because he wrote it. <laughs> um, but moving along, how do you move along? Um, our collection managed system is EMU, uh, developed by KE Software. Um, in order to actually describe some of the things that we've done, I think I need to remind everybody of some of its characteristics because some of these characteristics have actually been the drivers and the reasons for some of what we have done and some of uh, what we are doing. Um, the first thing uh, to remember is that it's an object-oriented database. Um, and the reason for that is that this is actually quite convenient for uh, collection management purposes. At least that's one of the reasons for it. And what I mean by that is on um, the, your left-hand side of that slide, there's a whole list of buttons on something that we call a, a, a command center, and each one of those represents a table. And each record in there is an object, but it is a whole record. For instance, there's one up there. That says sites, that's where we keep our geographic information. A single record in there would have all of the information about a particular locality. It's highly atomized, but it's not divided up into a whole bunch of uh, additional tables. There is, however, some relational uh, functionality within uh, the system, um, and that you can have uh, many to one uh, relationships amongst some of those objects. Uh, for instance, a site uh, may have had. Uh, multiple specimens collected from it, so you can collect a whole bunch of sites records back to that single geographic object. Uh, this is kind of a um, simplification here, but it's also client-server architecture. And what that means is there's some functionality on the server and some functionality within the desktop client that you see on your PC or if you re uh, remote in with, with uh, remote desktop. And this actually has uh, implications for us and things that we've had to do. Uh, if you can think of it, the community-wide kinds of things, and not just community-wide within the NHM, but also community-wide within the EMU user community, those kinds of things are central and can be uh, centralized on the server side. Things that are bespoke to the NHM, in some cases, in fact, are located on, on, on the client. Um, so a lot of our bespoke activity and bes bespoke customization and stuff like that has gone into our PC client uh, rather than into uh, uh, the central back end. Now that's not, that, that, that's a gross oversimplification and that categorization of course uh, is, is actually quite fuzzy. Um, and the indexing methods support the object-oriented model um, and, but that does have I implications in that joins are not necessarily supported uh, in the way that some people are used to. Um, there are just a few things that I actually want to talk about today, um, and these things are in support of the coming digitization program. We have not been sitting on our hands. We've, we've, been, we've known that this is coming for quite a long time, and so we've been actually working toward putting the collection management uh, uh, structures in place to actually enable us to actually carry it out. One of the things that we need to do is actually provide an export of data uh, because uh, uh, we don't actually think that uh, direct uh, access to the back end is fast enough for general web display. So for the informatics initiative, we're going to provide a, a data export. Um, the other thing that we're going to do is move uh, image loading um, server side, and you'll see some of this. We have something called batch operations, which is actually going to touch on data cleanup. Um, IMU is an API that we're beginning to make available within the institution. And then finally, uh, something about printing barcodes from the system uh, to allow us to link up to richer information. I'll talk just a little bit about each one of these in turn. Um, Data export. As I've said, the EMU data model and indexing methods um, are not necessarily suitable for a fast web display. There is, however, a core functionality within uh, the product, which is equivalent to a table dump. Um, and what we have worked out in collaboration with the informatics um, initiative is which tables they would actually like to display information from. Um, so we have done an initial dump of those tables, and then it's a simple matter to actually cron 
a weekly change process so that that information is provided on a weekly basis. Um, and then the informatics uh, team can actually structure that data and index it the way that it wants to, um, you know, for its, its, its purposes. Um, Server-side uh, image loading. Typically, for casual use with EMU, the images are actually processed client-side. And by that, I mean that uh, um, if you drag uh, an image from your Windows uh, directory onto one of the EMU multimedia controls, all of the processing that goes on, the generation of the resolutions, the extraction of the metadata from the header files and stuff like that actually occurs in the client. Um, that introduces lots of variables, including the spec of your PC, um, how fast the network transfer goes, all kinds of things, and processing of large images can be slow. Uh, we are in the process of actually moving uh, over 100,000 images that were collected for the Mellon Project in Botany by Steve Cafferty uh, off a of near line, and each one of those, which is about 220 megabytes, can take more than 10 minutes to process uh, through uh, a desktop PC. So what we've done working with KE Software is actually move bulk processing of imaging to server side. So we just set up a, a, a file share, essentially have a folder that we can pile images into and then set off a background process to actually process those images. Um, and that takes the processing from more than 10 minutes down to just about a minute. Uh, that means real things to us. For those 100,000 melon images, it can take 1.9 years with a single PC. Of course, you can line up a whole bunch of PCs and cut that down to nothing. Uh, but uh, with um, the change to uh, server-side loading, uh, I can load that in 69 days. Um, and the beauty of the background process um, is that it's effectively 24-7. It does uh, shut off when uh, the nightly maintenance run, but that's only about an hour and 15 minutes, and it starts up automatically. So we can just pile as many uh, uh, images in there as, as we need to. We are at this point limited that we're only using one core of uh, the server that uh, uh, EMU actually runs on, but we can actually increase that. We will, of course, have to monitor the impact on server performance you know, to make sure that we don't kill um, you know, the, the user experience. Eventually, though, in terms of digitization in achieving that uh, five or 20 million within five years, we are going to have to produce images at such a rate that this is actually going to have to be moved off into other servers as well. I'm nattering on at a slow rate. Okay, batch operations model. One of the things that we have here is that our collections digitization has to be an end-to-end -end high quality outcome process. And I think our biggest challenge in this is not actually the number of images that we have to capture and not the incredible amount of storage that we're going to need and so on, but actually the high quality of uh, the, the data. Um, and one of the issues in this kind of thing where you have lots of little projects going on and stuff like that are duplicates. All of these uh, different projects are actually producing the same information over and over again, oftentimes in slightly different forms. Um, there is a process already within the client to actually process this, but that actually ties up the client. We've actually, uh, working with KE Software, set up uh, a, a batch operations module once again to move that stuff server side and effectively offline and in the background. Um, we are also starting to roll the IMU um, um, application programming interface out across the union. Cather Bouton from the uh, in informatics team is actually starting to use this for the SCORE project. Um, this will actually mean that uh, uh, with a appropriate uh, developer expertise within the institution, we will be able to actually start to develop uh, mobile apps uh, and, and so on. And then finally, barcodes. Um, we have a lot of very small labels within the institution. This is uh, a, a, an image of some labels that we currently produce for paleontology. Those are 42 millimeters by 42 millimeters. We have lots of labels that are actually smaller than that. Is it physically impossible to fit very much information on a label that size? So what we've done is uh, started to print a barcode. At this point in time, it is just uh, the registration number or specimen ID on there. And the idea behind that is that if you're out in the collection, this is a machine-readable link to richer information. Uh, we have actually uh, printed these and read them successfully at 3 millimeters by 3 millimeters. So uh, with our current technology within the institution, this stuff actually works. Okay, thanks.